Hello, this is the Druid again, um, and I'm pre-recording my video for June, so I'm going to be um, speaking on somewhat of a pride topic. Um, the concept of ergi is something that I already addressed um, in the last video, but before I get into that, I just want to clear the air a little bit. Um, so I noticed that someone uh, saw my last video and made quite a bit many assumptions about who I am based off of it. So. Um, I know I'm under no obligation to um, comment on such things, but I still wanted to comment on them because they're so incorrect. So um, the commenter was alleging that um, just based off of watching uh, the video, someone I have never met in real life, never interacted with in any way, uh, could tell... Um, that I'm basically a shut-in, a hermit. I never interact with other people. Um, I'm so obviously so socially inept. Um, when the truth is, um, I live in an apartment complex, a small apartment complex. Um, while I do live alone, I interact with my neighbors almost daily, especially uh, one woman in particular. It just so happens that I'm neurodiverse, so I may not typically act like someone who regularly interacts with the public because, you know, autism is what I've been diagnosed with officially, and... Um, and my therapist supports me in um, self-diagnosis with a few other things. I said, um, based upon um, reading the DSM-5, which I had to read for graduate school, I um, am convinced that I also have um, obsessive-compulsive disorder and... Um, post-traumatic stress disorder, and um, borderline personality disorder. Not everybody agrees with self-diagnosis, but she is of the opinion that nobody knows you better than yourself. So, and um, given what people say about personality disorders, why would I ever claim to have anything that some people say makes you an abuser? So, anyhow, um, and I've been interacting with um, this nice group of local, um, it's at the senior center, it's at a senior center, so I'm the youngest person in the room other than the facilitator, who is another um, MSW student, but um, I just started coming because... I want to be a part of the local LGBTQ community because being around, quote-unquote, my people gives me life um, and helps me to forget a lot of the nonsense that gets thrown around about me. Um, if you know me in person, you know that I'm honest to a fault. Um, I am a horrible liar. And um, I may, in small bits and pieces, disclose some of um, parts of my life that are a little strange and controversial, such as the um, the spirit spousing. And um, but. Uh, or the fan fiction that everybody's so convinced makes me some kind of monster. But I'm of the opinion that um, 
you can explore the dark sides of humanity and um, dark events, dark people. You can be interested in them, you can be drawn to them, but that doesn't make you a dark person or a dangerous person or someone prone to um, deviancy or um, I don't know exactly that crime. <laughs> um, it's an open secret. I have acknowledged that I have um, paraphilias, but that does, that does not make me a dangerous person. Um, it just makes me someone who is up in my head a lot, trying to tell myself that um, you don't have to be quote-unquote normal to be accepted by average society. And um, having the um, obsessive compulsive disorder puts, and in addition to the paraphilias, I mean, it just kind of creates like this mess in my brain that I, I walk around with all the time, but uh, very rarely do I speak out about it other than safe spaces I found on the internet that other people think should not exist. Um, and um, in regards to the the spirit spousing, which is something that I will um, address in much more depth in a future video, but um, because of I don't know if it's mental health or something draws me back to the dark over and over again, but I can find beauty in the darkness. I can find humanity in the darkness, and that is um, another thing that um, people don't exactly agree with. They think um, all of the darkness of humanity should be shut away and never acknowledged. And I am of the opinion that we should draw it out and try to understand it. Uh, but again, I'm going to go a lot more in depth with that in a later video. Um, so for Pride Month, I changed into my uh, Ask Me About My Pronoun shirt. June is a pivotal month, not only in um, the queer community, but in the pagan calendar, because I am gearing up for um, whatever you want to call it, Midsommar, Litha, the solstice. I'm already making plans. My rituals on the holidays, the solstices, the equinoxes, and the other observance are pretty much just um, usually involving, um, I make a offering bag, a brown paper bag, wind it up with some pretty ribbon inside the bag, or some herbs, some sigils for a specific purpose that um, the burning activates and um and then i read aloud um i have this very nice um book that is called the druid songbook that i have been using for several years now i would say uh, because i found druidry in um 2021 after so many years, um, I officially started my um, exploration of the occult of witchcraft in 2016, but um, I considered myself a demonolater and a ceremonial cultist until um, finding Druidry, and now I'm much more of a pagan and um, really want to emphasize that uh, this channel isn't for fame 
or anything like that. I never prepare scripts, which is why the people think that, you know, I'm disjointed. You can tell how mentally ill he is because he speaks in all of these weird circles, disjointed circles. I just riff. I don't like to prepare speeches. Never have. I just like to speak from the heart and if if that makes me sound all over the place then oh well that's that's how my brain is anyhow so um so but on the pagan calendar the solstice is very important because it's um the point in the year that we have been striving towards um everything leads up to the longest day of the year and all of the possibilities therein uh, this year um, for the strawberry moon um, which is the full moon of june i am doing a gar a ritual blessing for the community garden that i am a part of um, that will be a Norse rite, a heathen rite, but uh, for, for the solstice, I will be doing a Druid rite. Um, there's a lot of similarities, but um, I enjoy, I found that I enjoy practicing both. It's allowing me to strike a balance between um, Druidry feels more like I don't want to call it secular because it's 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 very it's not secular it's very sacred it's a very animist pantheist uh my views um but i'm finding it's fulfilling more of like the um the interacting with others sort of role whereas my um my personal craft is now being um fulfilled by the Sather. Um, so the Sather um, large has been largely um, learning the runes. Um, I am learning the runes both in a divination sense and in a casting sense. Um, I don't think that's the right terminology, but in a sense where I'm invoking the runes. There we go. I'm invoking the runes for um, Sather, for magic, magical purposes, influencing um, whatever you want to call it, reality, the universe, putting energy out into the world. And, um, and that's why um, I wanted to... Um, I decided on another thing that I'm going to do um, on June 1st is I am going to uh, participate in what a Tumblr user by the name of Decolonize the Left is calling Wrath for Pride 2023. And this is going to be what they want to be a nationwide protest in solidarity of LGBT folk that are living um, under oppressive rules in these red states, fearing for their lives, their livelihoods, everything. And um, so for in solidarity with these folks in these desperate situations, um, it is intended to be a nationwide protest. Um, to support them and to send a message that we will not be fucked around with, basically. And um, what I will be doing is um, I have crafted a bind rune. And as it would turn out, um, I used a couple of really <laughs> badass runes for it. Um, Sorry, because I've been working with, um, I've been working with rune yoga, where you 
you not only learn the runes, but you um, try to embody the runes within um, your physical body, your spiritual body. And um, Thorizaz has been uh, the turning point um, where I really feel like I have stepped into um, the realm of harness, harnessing this magic, harnessing this energy. Um, Thori says, represents Thor, um, represents uh, chaos, represents aggression. Um, and it's, it's the first um, rune in the... Um, the runic yoga where you are um you you used um urus to ground your energy and you used um <laughs> i'm still learning their names you used uh fehu um to um draw energy through your central channel by using the the stata where you hold your your body like this in the shape of the rune and then um the urus was kind of like a downward dog almost and um you're grounding that energy and then thurizaz uh was uh finally harnessing that energy and striking out with it. So I have literally, as I keep saying on Tumblr, I have literally made a spear uh, using a replica spearhead and a broom handle and a little bit of duct tape to make sure it stays in place. And um, I started by just doing the um, Statha where you hold your arm straight out and you assume the horn stuff the the hand movement hand position it's like a, a madra and um and then you sway your arms as if you're holding um mjolnir and strike downward with it but <laughs> because I'm always very extra, I literally made a spear and um, not just for this purpose, but I started um, taking s sort of like a warrior two. That's where you, um, one foot is placed forward. The other foot is placed like this. And then you hold both arms straight out, except I am holding the spear and I'm swaying back and forth and striking out with it. So I'm being quite literal, <laughs> probably more than the, the author of the book intended. Um, but, and I've really started to feel um, the power of the rune um, flowing through me and outwards. And um, because I I went through this this phase in the in the druidry, where I completely swore off, I kind of went back to my old Buddhist roots, where I, I before even before the um, occultism and the demonolatry, I was a Buddhist, and I gave that up because they were too much about. Um, you know, stifling your anger, and I had a lot of anger about, uh, related to oppression, homophobia, and everything, that was even before I, I came out as trans, um, but I kind of went back to my Buddhist roots in the Druidry to, um, cultivate peace as much as possible, and, um, uh, was very pacifistic, nonviolent for a while, swore off cursing, until I circled back to it with um, the Sather. Um, and um, now I'm, I'm back to my position where um, 
I'm not just doling out curses for, for anybody. You know, I went through that life lesson of <laughs> cursing someone over a Twitter argument and became a meme for a while. Um, and now I'm using um, the baneful, the aggressive Sather as a tool against, um, you know, a lot of this oppression, fascism, all of these bad things that have happening, been happening towards the uh, LGBT community. So um, the ritual is going to be um, offense and defense towards victory. So the bind rune I design is Thurizaz, Halgalaz, and um, Tiwaz. Tiwaz is basically an arrow pointed upwards, and it's associated with the god Tear of Justice. Haugalaz is, um, looks like an H, and is associated with Hail, so that's also a very aggressive um, rune. And so I'm going to combine, um, combine these runes into... Um, I'm sorry. Combine these runes into emotion, the yoga, and um, <clears throat> strike out in both an offensive and a defensive posture against the um, the homophobia and the bigotry. And, um, and this ritual will be live streamed from my Facebook page, um, Southern Tier Transgender Advocacy or Trans Binghamton on June 1st. I believe I've set it for 7 p.m. And, um, because as I was saying to that group that I mentioned at the Senior Center, um, we need all hands on deck. You all have been through this level of societal homophobia before. And uh, you knew back then you had to fight back. I'm fighting back with every tool in the toolbox, which includes old Viking magic, as it were. I even um, read a Galder. Um, a spoken spell of protection over everyone, and they, they appreciated that. So, um, those are my June plans, and um, since so many things are happening in June, maybe I'll even re record a second video for the month, but I have um, the two rituals planned, the first, the fourth, and then... Um, will be appearing at um, Binghamton's Pride Palooza in, on Saturday, June the 10th to hand out some trinkets for um, the nonprofit organization uh, that I just mentioned. So my nonprofit organization, I have to. <laughs> so I have definitely talked long enough, as you can probably hear from my voice. And um, so that's that's June uh, for the time being. Um, July, I will come back around and speak about um, again how I mentioned in the opening um, spirit companionship, and I will also um, speak about my plans for. Voluspa for having a vision, visionary work, um, and I'll be going back to working with plant spirits, so I'll, I'll touch upon that. So that is it for now um, with the Trans Masked Druid.